Well, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first, I want to uh, commend uh, Mr. Degado Casino for his outstanding service in the United States Navy. Uh, as a rock squad swimmer at West Point, I'm very jealous of the Navy rescue swimmer, so <laughs> I think you got me already. I don't think I have to do anything, okay? You, you're all set. You're all set. Uh, but no, it, it, remarkable service to the nation and the Navy. Thank you, sir. Uh, and let me follow up. Uh, it, it, I thought Senator Shelby asked a very good question, Mr. Gallagher, about your experiences, because you were in several very critical positions. Um, and I just want to make sure I'm aware. In your uh, staff position, you had some involvement with the Consolidated Supervised Entity Program, which was uh, the designed to supervise Lehman, among others. We, how deeply engaged were you in the day-to-day -day activities of Lehman before it collapsed? Were, were you getting real-time information? Thank you, Senator, for the question. Uh, I came down to the Division of Trading and Markets as a deputy director at the end of July of 2008. So like Commissioner Aguilar, came into a new role just shortly before mm -hmm. uh, Lehman uh, failed. Um, in, in that short window, just weeks uh, before Lehman failed, uh, myself, my, my boss, uh, Eric Siri, the division director of the Trading and Markets, along with the chairman and other senior staff, we're getting um, a, a fair flow of information, trying to coordinate with other domestic regulators uh, to ensure that we could best contain uh, any problem that happened if, if Lehman did in fact fail. There has been some allegations that I've read publicly where uh, Lehman was reporting liquidity figures which were much different than the actual figures which it's been suggested the regulators knew about. Is that an those ac allegations accurate? Uh, Senator, I've heard some of those same reports. I'm not aware uh, personally that that was an issue. I, I know it was something that was raised, I believe, in the trustees' report regarding Lehman, and I know it's something that the staff is investigating, right. or was at least when I left, investigating vigorously, and I assume that to the extent there was any impropriety that they'll... But that would be report. very disturbing if, in fact, market information was much different than what that regulators had. Absolutely, Senator. Again, one of the lessons learned was the, the need for information, not just the sharing with regulators, but for somebody to have the information by which you could you could make rational decisions as a regulator. Mm -hmm. And if the businesses were not giving appropriate information, if they were taking uh, different uh, perspectives on uh, pricing, for example, of the same types of instruments, then you can't have the information you need to make those rational decisions. Do you think, uh, given your experience, that, that the SEC is in a stronger position now with the Dodd-Frank legislation to effectively regulate these institutions? There's no doubt that the SEC has many more tools uh, given to it by Dodd-Frank to, to regulate the institutions, the markets, and to take action that uh, before the enactment of the statute uh, they didn't have. And I know there's a, a appropriate concern with cost-benefit analysis, uh, but um, the next issue and the hard issue is, okay, what are the costs and what are the benefits? And who's paying the costs and who's paying the benefits? And you can define a cost-benefit analysis uh, in some cases, you know, what answer do you want? I'll give you the analysis. Uh, I think one of the uh, aspects of this crisis was the huge cost to taxpayers, which may have been m mitigated or avoided with better regulation. And I would urge both you gentlemen, when you consider this cost-benefit analysis, it's not just a narrow what cost will be paid by the regular entity, what, what nominal benefit it is in terms of specific information to consumers, but much broader, if this fails, we're on the hook for trillions of dollars, and I hope you do that. Uh, another aspect, Ms. Gallup, too, because again, if you're, you're a critical role, uh, and Senator Shelby alluded to it, and that's the, the degree at which enforcement is delegated to uh, non-commissioners. I, I mean, there are five commissioners, you have extraordinarily complicated duties, et cetera, and the impression that many, particularly critics, uh, have lodged is that the enforcement um, agents, uh, division, were in effect hobbled. They, they had to uh, get permission to do things which previously that they could do on their own, subpoenas, collect information. They, there a certain degree they could settle claims. That was dramatically um, held back 
under Chairman Cox, and I think your, your Commissioner Atkins was particularly vocal. And um, I don't, personally, I don't think it, it resulted in, in effective performance, and I think it might have done something even worse, send the message to the street that you know, the cops were off the beat. So what is your impression now, the new uh, rules that uh, Chairman Shapiro and others have adopted? Well, thank you, uh, Senator. It, it, let me just say at the outset, it's, it's imperative for the SEC to have a strong and vibrant enforcement program. It's imperative for investors, it's imperative for markets. It, the agency needs to be seen as the cop on the beat, and there needs to be comfort and confidence in the markets that the SEC will be there. Um, I, uh, you know, as to your specific question of the, the, the hobbling uh, of the agency, you know, there, I understand that there was um, some coverage of the issue and uh, implication that there, there was some hobbling. I think that was largely related to uh, the commission diving into an important enforcement policy issue, which related to uh, penalizing shareholders of corporations. That was a very, very small part of, of the enforcement docket, and, and I knew that because I worked for Chairman Cox, 2% or less of the cases, but I think it got an outsized reaction. And that, you know, to my initial point, you can't have these negative perceptions about the agency. Whether it's really hobbling somebody or not, it's very bad uh, for the agency. As to the um, changes that Chair uh, Chairman Shapiro has implemented, the restructuring of the division, some of the new delegations, I've been looking at it from the outside, and if confirmed, I'm, I'm eager to get involved and see how uh, this is paying off, what, what dividends have been paid, what are the new efficiencies. The one thing I can tell you as a constant, though, that I have the utmost faith, uh, faith in the enforcement staff. They're, they're men and women of just an unbelievable caliber. They've been through a hard time, and I think with proper encouragement and oversight from the commission, they're going to regain uh, the confidence that they used to have. Can I just one final point? <clears throat> Mr. Aguilar, there were a couple of situations in which you had a principled opposition, I believe, and you refrained from voting. Am I being accurate? I don't want to mischaracterize. Senator Reid, I think I know what you're speaking about, uh, and I wouldn't necessarily characterize it that way. Uh, there was a uh, ill-advised policy that had been adopted with respect to certain clawbacks that, in my mind, read out from uh, the read out the required uh, authority given to the staff by uh, Sarbanes Oxley in 2002. And I engaged in a series of discussions with uh, my colleagues and with the staff to try to get that policy reversed. Uh, while that was going on, there were a couple of cases where. Um, while the discussion was ongoing, I thought it best um, not to participate in. Uh, and while I continued to dialogue with the staff and with the commissioners what the policy should be so we could address those cases under the appropriate policy, uh, I would have wished that those cases had been delayed until the policy had been uh, restructured, as it subsequently was. but the decision was made for them to proceed with those cases while the dialogue was still ongoing for us to try to develop a better policy. Well, all I can say, we have these similar situations around here, and sometimes votes don't come on time, but typically we feel when the votes call, we have to vote. So just one impression. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman.